Mac Mini is a very interesting device. You see, Apple launched the famous and very controversial Power Mac G4 Cube back in the year of 2000, and that computer looked like something that came out of an alien spaceship. So it was a mini computer, a box that held all the components of the Mac, and you connected this box to a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, and, you know, it just worked. But you see, the problem with the G4 Cube uh, was its price. So it was $1,800 in 2000, which in 2018, that would actually be $2,600. So obviously it was, you know, really expensive and people just didn't buy it because of that. But then Apple released the original Mac Mini in 2005 and it was a completely different story. So it started from $500 and it was never meant to be a super computer like the G4 Cube was claiming to be. Instead, it was Apple's most affordable Mac that they were selling. Then in 2010, Apple introduced the second generation Mac Mini with a major redesign. So it was much smaller, much more powerful. And then in 2011, Apple has released the third generation Mac Mini, which actually removed the optical drive. And that's the exact same design that we've had ever since. But the last time that Apple has updated the Mac Mini was actually in 2014. So it still started from $500, but the performance was dropped and Apple hasn't updated the Mac Mini ever since. And users weren't really sure who the Mac Mini was for. So some people bought it because it was Apple's cheapest Mac, and some people bought it because they wanted to set it up as a server or remote access point for all of their video editing needs. But the good news is that Apple has actually released the brand new Mac Mini, this one, and it's a completely different story from the previous generation. So it's much more expensive, but it's also much more powerful and it now has some pro level ports now, which is awesome. So yeah, the target audience for the Mac Mini now is actually the prosumer market. I'm in that market, so here's my full in-depth review of the 2018 Mac Mini after 30 days of use. Okay, so starting off with the design, the new Mac Mini has the exact same dimensions actually as the previous model. So to give you guys an idea, it's much smaller than my 15-inch MacBook Pro, however it is considerably thicker, and when compared to something like the 2018 iPad Pro, it's almost the same width. The Mac Mini is actually the smallest Mac desktop that Apple makes, and actually the smallest Mac that Apple sells overall. You know, that's why it's called the Mac Mini, so the name actually makes a lot of sense, unlike the MacBook Air, which doesn't make any sense anymore. Now, there are really only two design differences when compared to the previous model. So the first one is the color, it now comes in space gray, and this is actually Apple's darker shade of space gray, so the same one as on the iMac Pro, so it is much darker than on something like a MacBook Pro. And then the second design difference is that the power on indicator has been moved from the top right to the bottom right, and this is really similar to the ones in the 2011 and before MacBook Pros, where the LED is actually on the inside, and then the aluminum is actually thinned out to let the light from the LED pass through. So yeah, absolutely love Apple's attention to detail, but that's pretty much it in terms of the design. It's a very small box that you can easily put in your backpack and connect to your home or office setup. Now, actually, my favorite part about the new Mac Mini is the connectivity. We have a power button, the power cable, we even have an Ethernet port, which you can actually configure to a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. This is huge, guys. This is, this is massive. You can connect this thing to a server with a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, so... That's awesome. And wait, there's actually way more. We also get not one, not two, but actually four Thunderbolt 3 ports. We get a one HDMI 2.0 port, which supports output at 4K at 60 Hertz, which is also supported by the four Thunderbolt 3 ports anyways. And we also get 5K output at 60 Hertz as well. And then we also get two USB 3.0 type A ports, as well as a 3.5 liter headphone jack for connecting speakers. Speaking of speakers, the Mac Mini does indeed come with a built-in speaker, but you know, since there are no speaker grills here, the sound is really bad, like incredibly muffled. But really, the best part about all these ports are the four Thunderbolt 3 ports. So with Thunderbolt 3, you can connect a 5K monitor to this at 60 Hertz. You can connect Thunderbolt 3 docks, or even better, you can connect an external GPU or eGPU, such as the Vega 64 that I've connected and literally turned the Mac Mini into a full-fledged iMac Pro. And the thing is, the only other Mac that has four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a 10 gigabit Ethernet port is the iMac Pro, and they won't actually cost six times more than the entry-level Mac Mini does. So yeah, this is this is huge, guys. Okay, so we talked about the design, the connectivity, but what about the actual performance? Is it is it any good? Well, actually, it's 
it's pretty good. So you can configure this with the Intel 8700B processor, which is a 6-core, 3.2 GHz i7 processor, which can turbo boost to up to 4.6 GHz, and also has a 12 MB level 3 cache. And the CPU alone is actually the most powerful CPU in any Mac ever, so in terms of the single-core score performance, it's actually higher than the top-of-the-line iMac Pro. In terms of the multi-core, well, the 18-core iMac Pro is, of course, the best one since, you know, it has 18 cores versus 6 cores. Now, the Mac Mini also supports up to 2 terabytes of flash storage with speeds of up to 3.4 gigabytes per second in terms of the read speed, so yeah, that's that's insane. Now, you can also configure the Mac Mini to up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. However, the RAM is actually upgradable now. Uh, it is a bit more complicated to do yourself, but at least it isn't soldered anymore. So I do recommend some third-party RAM options instead of the Apple ones, because Apple charges an insane amount of money for upgrading the RAM. I've actually included the link in the description for the most compatible 32 gigabyte module uh, if you want to do the RAM upgrade yourself. And Honestly, you should. Then the cooling in the Mac Mini is also much better than in a MacBook Pro, for example. It's not as good as in an iMac Pro, but also better than in an iMac. So yeah, so far, so good. So what's the catch? Well, you see the catch is that a Mac Mini has no dedicated GPU. It only has the Intel UHD Graphics 630, which is actually weaker than even the integrated GPU inside a baseline 13-inch 2017 MacBook Pro. So here I have a 4K project by MacBook Air Review, which is a 15-minute 4K timeline, and it scrolls fairly smooth. There is there is a bit of lag here and there. Now, in terms of the actual export time, the Mac Mini exported this in H.264 in 46 minutes and 39 seconds. So as a comparison, my MacBook Pro 15-inch i9 20, uh, 2018 with a 560X GPU finishes in 14 minutes. So quite a big difference between the two. However, mine is the baseline uh, Intel Core i3 model. So if any of you get the Intel Core i7 8700B processor model, the export time would be a bit faster, it would be lower, but the main bottleneck on this is still the GPU and not the CPU. However, thanks to those four Thunderbolt 3 ports, you can actually connect a GPU, an external GPU. In my case, I've connected the Vega 64 GPU, which is the best option in the top of the line iMac Pro with a Razer Core X enclosure. So these are actually the two best eGPU options for a Mac. I've included links to both in the description. So with eGPU connected, the Mac Mini exported this project in 16 minutes and seven seconds. So a massive improvement compared to before, but still slower than a 15-inch i9 MacBook Pro with a dedicated GPU. So like I said, I do not have the 8700B CPU model, but rather the baseline i3 model, but even with the 8700B and an eGPU attached, the Mac Mini would still be slower than a top-of-the-line 15-inch MacBook Pro just because of the data bandwidth that you lose with an eGPU versus having a weaker but dedicated GPU attached, you know, directly to the motherboard. Okay, so in the end, who is the Mac Mini for? Well, the thing is, the Mac Mini does not come with a keyboard, or a mouse, or a monitor, or proper speakers, so you have to buy all of those yourself. And even though the Space Gray Apple keyboard and the trackpad, they look amazing with the Space Gray Mac Mini, they're quite expensive. So I've actually attached some amazing alternatives in the description, such as the Logitech MX Master 2S and this wireless Logitech keyboard that works on both macOS, Windows, as well as iOS and Android. So you have these three profiles here, so you can actually assign one to each device. So that's pretty cool. So that's my point. The best part about the Mac Mini is that you don't have to buy the LG UltraFine 5K monitor or the Apple keyboard and trackpad if you don't need those or want those. Uh, if you simply want a 1080p monitor or a really cheap you know, keyboard and mouse to keep the cost low, well, you can do that. The Mac Mini gives you that flexibility which no other Mac computer aside from the Mac Pro offers. And if you do decide to go the Apple route and add a 5K UltraFine monitor, then the Mac Mini would cost you more than an iMac Pro, and that's even without an eGPU in the first place. Okay, so in my case, I'm actually keeping the Mac Mini. I'll be using this thing as a server. So one Thunderbolt 3 port connects to my QNAP uh, 12A2T3 Thunderbolt 3 NAS, and the other Thunderbolt 3 port connects to my MacBook Pro, and then I have multiple computers connected directly to the NAS by Thunderbolt 3, and indirectly through daisy chaining, um, they would be connected to the Mac Mini as well. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't even need to have a monitor connected to this, because I can access everything remotely, and this is how I'm using my Mac Mini, by the way. Um, this, in my opinion, is the best use case scenario for a Mac Mini, using it as a hub to connect multiple Mac computers to it uh, through the four Thunderbolt 3 ports and, you know, just make a server out of it. If you plan on maxing this thing out and, you know, buying an eGPU, a 5K monitor and so on, it will actually cost you more than an iMac Pro, which in the end would still be more powerful in terms of that dedicated GPU. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the Mac Mini. What would your use case scenario be? And in case you're getting one, I don't know, let me know which configuration you guys are getting. But 
yeah, definitely subscribe and notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one. Also, feel free to join the zone. You can tap the join button and you support the channel and you also get some pretty cool exclusive features such as badges that actually evolve over time and priority comments in the live stream, um, which I'm doing one at the end of every month. I've done the previous one linked here uh, about a week ago. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. Thanks for watching my in-depth review of the Mac Mini Son of Tech. Signing out. Cheers.